Hello everyone, this is Dr. Sam and today we will discuss fetal chest ultrasound cases. Firstly, we will study the fetal heart and the best view to completely see the heart is the four chamber view in which we can see all four chambers and the valves as well and also the interventricular septum and the atrial septum and also the foramen ovale here is the moderator band in the right ventricle and this circular anechoic structure is the descending aorta always remember the aorta will be very near to the left atrium so when we locate the aorta the nearest chamber will be the left atrium in the left ventricular outflow tract view we see a proper appearance of the left ventricle and the aorta and here is the right ventricle and the posterior most left atrium and part of the descending aorta is also seen here in right ventricular outflow tract view we can see the right ventricle and the main pulmonary artery and here are the branches the right and left pulmonary arteries part of the aorta is also seen the short axis view gives us a cross section of the heart we can see the aorta the right ventricle the main pulmonary artery the ivc svc view gives us a longitudinal view of the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava along with the right atrium in a ventricular septal defect there will be a hole in the interventricular septum and there will be a connection between the right and left ventricles on color doppler we can see blood passing through this ventricular septal defect an atrioventricular septal defect will have a large defect in the center of the heart that is over here and it is also known as AV canal or endocardial cushion defect now because this defect is present at the level of the valves so there will be valve abnormalities present we can further evaluate the AVST on color Doppler. We can see the defect at the center of the heart. In Epstein's anomaly, there is a large right atrium but a small right ventricle, and there will be cardiomegaly and the tricuspid valve will be displaced towards the apex because of the enlarged right atrium here is another case of Epstein's anomaly showing a large right atrium a small right ventricle and the displacement of tricuspid valves towards the apex in hypoplastic left heart syndrome the left side of the heart will be smaller we will have small left atrium and small left ventricle and the right atrium and ventricles will be enlarged here is another image of hypoplastic left heart syndrome with small left atrium and ventricle and large right atrium and large right ventricle in transposition of the great arteries the aorta and pulmonary artery switch places 
Normally the aorta and the pulmonary artery cross each other. Normally they are not parallel to each other, but in transposition of the great arteries, they have a parallel configuration. So this parallel configuration is a sign of transposition of the great arteries. In this four chamber view, you can see the parallel configuration, which is not present in the normal view. This is a transposition of the great arteries. Here is another image showing the parallel configuration. The aorta arises from the right ventricle and the pulmonary artery arises from the left ventricle. Tetralogy of Fallot contains four abnormalities which include right ventricular outflow tract obstruction, a ventricular septal defect, a right ventricle hypertrophy, and an overriding aorta. But two abnormalities are more easily seen. One is the ventricular septal defect and the other one is the overriding aorta in which the aorta will overlie this ventricular septal defect. In a double outlet right ventricle, we will see two arteries arising from the right ventricle. The aorta and the pulmonary artery, they are both arising from the right ventricle. In the case of truncus arteriosus, a single vessel will arise from the heart. Here we only see one vessel. We do not see any vessel from here. Just one vessel arising from here. Ectopia cordis refers to the extra thoracic location of the heart. The heart will be outside the thoracic cavity because of a sternal defect. Here you can see in this sagittal view, the heart is located outside the chest. Sometimes the heart may have an echogenic or hyperechoic dot like structure that will be present in the ventricle attached to the interventricular septum. This is known as an echogenic intracardiac focus. A rhabdomyoma is a cardiac tumor that usually arises from the interventricular septum. It will appear as a hyperechoic round ovoid mass. Here we have another case of rhabdomyoma, a hyperechoic round mass occupying the ventricle. A fetal diaphragm appears as a hypoechoic structure between the thoracic cavity and the abdominal cavity. In this coronal view we see the lungs and the heart above the diaphragm whereas in a congenital diaphragmatic hernia there is a defect in the diaphragm which will lead to herniation of abdominal contents into the thorax such as the stomach. Here we can see the stomach is in the thoracic cavity. The stomach will appear as a cystic structure because it is fluid filled so it is anechoic. And here we have a four chamber view showing the normal thorax with the heart and here we have stomach right next to the heart and the heart is also displaced towards the right side. Now we will discuss fetal lung abnormalities starting with CPAM which stands for congenital pulmonary airway malformation. It has three types based on its appearance. The first type is 
macrocystic which has large cysts they can be one or more than one and the lung is enlarged and hyperechoic as well and it may cause mediastinal shift in type 2 we will have small multiple cysts scattered throughout the lung and the lung is enlarged and hyperechoic in cpam type 3 we will see a hyperechoic enlarged lung without any cysts a bronchopulmonary sequestration is defined as an abnormal lung tissue that is disconnected from the tracheobronchial tree and is a non-functioning lung tissue and it usually appears as a wedge-shaped hyperechoic lung mass on color doppler we will see a branch from the aorta supplying the sequestration it does not receive its blood supply from the pulmonary vessels a bronchogenic cyst is a lung cyst which appears as an anechoic cyst and it may have internal echoes and if it is large enough it may cause a mediastinal shift here is a large bronchogenic cyst in the coronal view causing mediastinal shift chaos stands for congenital high airway obstruction syndrome in this we will have both the lungs enlarged and hyperechoic which will cause inversion or flattening of the diaphragm here you can see the diaphragm is inverted because the lungs are enlarged here we have a four chamber view the lungs are enlarged bilaterally and they have displaced the heart towards the center of the thorax in chaos the trachea can also be dilated here we can see hyperechoic lungs along with a dilated trachea it is fluid filled that is why it is anechoic pleural effusion is the accumulation of fluid in the pleural cavity this fluid appears as anechoic or hypoechoic here we can see pleural effusion in the longitudinal view fluid is surrounding the lungs in this coronal view we can see bilateral pleural effusion fluid is surrounding both the lungs pericardial effusion is the accumulation of fluid around the heart we can see this anechoic fluid around the heart now if the thickness is 2 millimeters or less it is normal amount of pericardial fluid but if it is more than 2 mm it will be pericardial effusion in this image we have a large amount of fluid collection around the heart a severe case of pericardial effusion Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and stay tuned for more imaging videos.